Hi beautiful people. So I did a little Instagram Q&A this week and I didn't get the chance to answer a question that I really wish that I had gotten the time to but now looking back I'm glad because now I could just make a whole video on it. Um, but this question came from a girl who I mean, I just like feel like we are so similar because this is something that I really asked myself a lot for a long time and just struggled with the idea of like how to how to go about navigating this life. Like we're called to do this, but also this. So how do we how do we navigate that? So here's a question because you're probably confused. So <laughs> the question was, how do you distinguish between being a humble servant and being walked all over? So like I said, this was like my whole life growing up because I always, always, always didn't speak up for myself or say what I really thought or really was feeling or what I know is the truth, what the, what the Bible teaches and everything because I didn't want to be rude. Like I always was like, well, I have to be nice so I can't stand up for myself or I can't say anything because then that would be rude. And I always, always, always confused what I thought was like being loving, which I thought like being nice and not saying anything, that was the loving thing when really like love is speaking truth. Like you speak the truth in love. You can do both at the same time. And there came a point for me because I really did feel like I got walked all over for a really long time. And I just, I literally got so sick and tired of it that in college, so this was like five years ago. It was like when I was a freshman in college. I got so tired of it that I was like, you know what? Or maybe it was longer than five. Let's say six and a half years ago. <laughs> Not that it matters. But I think it was like six and a half years ago, whenever I was a freshman in college, that I, I got so sick of it that I signed myself up for counseling when I was at Olivet. It was free. It was awesome. If you're at Olivet, check in to see if they, check in to see if they still have free counseling because it was awesome. But anyway, I literally just remember telling my counselor, I just want to learn how to be assertive, like speak up for myself and stand up for myself in a way that's Christ-like. Can I do that? And she was like, of course. And so we would walk through all these phrases and things that I could reply and say, um, and she would pretend to be these people who used to kind of walk all over me. And so she would say little snarky comments or she would say um, very passive aggressive comments like people used to say to me. And I would just sit there and be like, well, if I say anything, like in the past, if I say anything, then I'm not going to be Christ-like and I'm going to be rude. Well, that's not true. And I had to learn that and, and she would walk with me through it. Like, no, Becca, you're still being too nice. Like, you can stand up for yourself. Like, Jesus spoke the truth in love. Um, and so eventually, I now like I just, <laughs> this is just me. I just speak up for myself and, and I do things that she taught me. Like, I'll give you some concrete examples at the end of things she taught me to do that I don't even think about anymore. Like, it's just habit. And it's awesome. Obviously, like, I'm not perfect in how I handle everything and, and how I talk to everybody, but I've learned that you can be Christ-like and a servant without being walked all over. So, here's the deal. I think a lot of girls struggle with this idea of like, we have to be nice so therefore we can't do these things. And this can often look like not being able to say no, um, having guys like take advantage of us and, and us not speak up for like, no, I don't wanna keep going farther. Like this is my boundary, this is my conviction. Not being able to stand up when um, guys pressure us to do stuff like that. Um, in a relationship or even random guys like coming up I can't tell you how uncomfortable I get when a guy will like grab my neck or like like right up here the top or like grab my lower not grab but like touch my lower back or just like rub their hand along my arm like random guys who I don't know like I used to not even be able to say anything because I was so afraid of being rude that I couldn't do that and I know I'm not the only one same with like people saying snarky passive aggressive comments that's like that was the biggest reason I I went to counseling but that I just couldn't handle it I didn't know how to reply and same with like not not being able to say like our views on Christianity and the Bible because we didn't want to step on any toes and be rude because you know we're gonna rock the boat or whatnot and then also this never happened to me praise the Lord but like people financially take advantage and like emotionally abusive type of things like happening that happens all the time and and I know Christian women out there and men of course but most the majority of people who watch my videos are women so that's why it's aimed for you but yeah I just know this happens to a lot of you and you're afraid to speak up and to do anything but I want to I want to look at the scripture and see who was the ultimate servant what did he do how did he do it because if we don't look to Jesus we are looking for you know, folly essentially, because Jesus is the true and best servant there ever was. And of course, studying other people in the Bible, you can see that they served, but they weren't 
the ultimate servant. Like Jesus is the true and best um, servant. And the way that he served and loved and lived was perfect. And so we need to look to him. And the thing I hope that you take away from this video is his ultimate act of service was dying for us on the cross um, for our sins. Like that is the greatest act of service and act of love there ever, ever was. And that was to make our relationship right again with God. But that act that he did in that act of service, it was not unwilling. Like he did not unwillingly go to the cross. Jesus willingly took up his cross and, and walked up the mountain and died for us on the cross. So I want to read some verses about this because it wasn't against his will that he went. He wasn't forced as a robot. Like it was God's will for him to do it, but God, as Jesus submitted it, this is going to be confusing because I know people are going to be like, now you got to talk about the Trinity, maybe. But the Father, it was his will for Jesus, God the Son, to die on the cross. But Jesus submitted himself to the will of the Father over his own will. He said, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. So I'm going to read you that from scripture here. So I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 41. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father... If you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And so in saying that, it's it's literally saying that Jesus was feeling overwhelmed. And it says that he was sweating blood because he was so anguished and so stressed out. And he did feel in his will and in his want and in his humanness, he couldn't handle this. He was like, Lord, this is too much for me. I cannot handle this. Lord, take this from me. But, he says, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So Jesus willingly submitted himself to the Father and did the Father's will over his own will. Um, I think that's very important when you're thinking about this, when you're thinking about how we are to be servants to other people while we're here on earth. The idea of submission, I know, is very um, confusing and it's been abused, especially in marriage, the way that people say, you know, submit to me or else, and like, I don't know, making it so that a woman has no opinion at all in marriage, and it's just the guy's way or the highway, and no respect for a woman at all. That is not the way that biblical submission is defined, and that's not the way that it should look. And I know that that has been abused and, and misused for a long time, and it still is right now, but the idea of biblical submission, that is a willing submission. Um, it is a submission that comes from love. Like you are loved by God, therefore you submit yourself to God. I am not submitting myself every day out of fear of God. Like I'm terrified, therefore I'm going to do what you say or else. If it's out of fear, that word fear is like a reverent fear. Like I, I have so much respect and reverence for God that therefore I'm going to praise him and live for him and submit to his will over my own. Because I know how holy he is, therefore I will give up my will for his. I will submit myself to him and give my life over to him. Biblical submission comes from a place of love. Um, so I was first loved by God, therefore I will love him back. Um, Jesus first submitted himself to the Father, therefore I will submit myself to the Father um, and say, not my will, but yours be done. Think about our lives and when we became Christians, for example. We willingly counted the cost and followed Jesus. Like we willingly thought it out and said, you know what, yep, I'm willing to, to die for Jesus. I'm willing to be hated for Jesus and to be persecuted for Jesus because he loved me first and now I'm gonna love him because he first died for me, now I'm willing to die for him. Um, because he first served me, I will now serve him. All of those things, it's like he first did it to me, therefore I will do it back. Like he chose me, therefore, you know, I'm gonna choose to live for him and love him and and, and be willing to die for him. Um, and in turn, again, it's like, it goes bing, bing, bing. Like God loved me first, then I loved him. Now I will love other people. God first served me as Jesus and then I, will serve him in serving other people. Because that, like I said, the order matters, the intention matters. Am I doing this out of fear, as in terrified fear, not a reverent fear? Or am I doing this out of love because he first loved me? Um, I think that really matters, the intentions and the order. So I'm kind of getting back to the question here. Okay, Jesus, his call in our life and the way that he told us to live while we are in this world is two things. We are to be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. So that is not to say that we are to be walked all over. Like the way John Piper puts it, I love it. He said that we are to have broken hearted, 
boldness in our witness in the way that we live our lives and we were to have contrite courage as well so boldness and courage like those are biblical ideas we're called to live that way and we do live that way because of the holy spirit being in us he enables us to be courageous to be bold um in the way we live and in our testimony of yeah jesus did this for me and i'm not afraid to say it and show it and, and live this out. So being shrewd as snakes and um, innocent as doves, that is not the same thing as, yes, women, be a doormat. That is the opposite of that. Like we are to be bold and to be courageous and to speak up for truth and to um, preach the gospel and, and live a life of love, but not a life that's that's too afraid to ever say anything. Like we are to stand up and, and be bold. We can say no when someone's trying to get us to do something that goes against our convictions, what we know is biblically um, right and wrong. Like we can stand up for that and we can say no, that's not what I'm gonna do. We can be confident in Jesus because we are not doormats, right? We are children of God. We are God's ambassadors. Um, we were chosen by God, set apart before the beginning of the world. Like to do good things that God prepared in advance for us to do. Um, we are holy. We are free. We are no longer slaves to Satan and to sin and to man and, and afraid of what they're going to think if we say something or do something. Like, we are God's. We are God's holy and blameless children. And... Um, we are created in his image. We are God's image bearers. That's who we are. So when you're sharing with others about the truth of God's word and, and the gospel, like don't be afraid. Um, don't feel like you have to be this silent, like, well, I mean, I kind of believe in like Jesus, but like, I don't want to step on any toes or anything. Like, no, that's not who we are. Like we can be courageous and bold and, and do this in love, right? We don't have to be this rash, like rude, never listen to anybody else, never care about anything else. I'll just be so rude and never, you know, like, no, don't get me wrong that we're just gonna be like, <laughs> never listen and never care and just, well, this is the truth, so I'm gonna tell you like it is. Like, you speak the truth in love. It has to be that way, it has to be that way. But the way that we could do that, okay, this is what my counselor taught me. You stand with good posture and you make good eye contact and you have a firm, strong voice. Don't feel like you have to like, you know, like, a little bit. Like, really, stand with good posture, shoulders back, I have terrible posture, but whenever I'm like speaking up, I'm always like, because like I'm trained now to do that, but you make good eye contact, you keep your hands, like you can use like when you're, you know, giving a speech and communications, they say, keep your hands decently close to your face, like not just like down there where you can't see them, like you can use your hands and you can, <laughs> it sounds like silly now, but like truly, a firm voice, strong eye contact, you can use your hands to communicate and, and have that good posture of, yes, I'm strong in Christ. Like as a human being, I am weak, but in Christ I'm made strong. Like in my weakness, he actually, he makes us strong. So I hope those things are like tangible, tangible things that can help you because yes, we are to serve, but we are not doormats. They are not the same thing. We are to have contrite courage, brokenhearted boldness, to be as shrewd as snakes, but as innocent as doves. That is the call of God on our life. It is it is willing submission to the Father and willingly serving other people. I am not serving other people because I'm fearful of them and I don't want, you know, people to think badly of me. No, I am doing it because Jesus first served me. Therefore therefore I will serve him in serving other people. But nobody's walking all over me. I am submitted only to God right here. Um, and I am well let me stop there for a second because marriage is one thing we can talk about that in a different video. Same with government. We are submitted to the government and that's especially important right now when it's not um, fun, which it's never going to be fun. Obviously, <laughs> it's less fun right now to do that. But all I'm saying is I'm not married and I am submitted to the government. I'm submitted to, um, you know, the elders and the, and the pastors at my church. But ultimately is what I'm trying to say. I hope that you understood that. Ultimately, I'm submitted to God and everyone else. It's like, like I talked about with my students at school, they're here. I'm their teacher. I'm here. My principal's here. The superintendent's here, but God, God's to the roof. Like, yes, you guys are here right now because I am your authority as your teacher, but there's the principal above me. There's the superintendent above both of us. And ultimately God is the authority above all people. So I hope that makes sense. I hope this helps you to the person who asked it. Thank you for asking because I feel like a lot of women needed to, to hear that, to just take a breath and be like, okay, now I feel free in Christ to go share um, and speak the truth in love. So hope this helped you. Thank you for asking. Have a great day. Know that you are so loved and so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs>